In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, today I would like to just offer a brief word on an important concept in Orthodox ecclesiology. And I do so because this is a theme of constant discussion, and it is important in understanding our identity. And this is the concept of apostolic succession. The very creed that we recite during our liturgies and in other divine services, as well as in our private prayers, speaks of the Church in specifically apostolic terms. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic Church. And discussions about apostolicity, what it means to be apostolic, have been part of the patristic discussion since the very earliest centuries, and indeed all throughout the Church's history. And the theme becomes important, it's always important, but it takes on a kind of urgency in its importance whenever there are movements to speak of the Church in relation to other Christian bodies. And very often it is precisely in these kinds of inter-religious or inter-Christian discussions that apostolic succession is raised in a manner that, while not being precisely wrong, is certainly insufficient. And this is the idea that apostolic succession essentially means a chain of unbroken transmission. That the Church begins with Christ transmitting his truth to his apostles, the apostles then transmitting this to their successors, the successors transmitting it to theirs, and theirs, and theirs, and theirs, all the way to our day, and thus a sure sign of the truth that we receive in our day is that it bears this lineage of succession back to the apostles, to Christ God himself. And thus apostolic succession becomes a manner, if not the critical, the most important and significant manner for asserting the authority of the Church in her course of history. We believe the same thing today as was believed yesterday and so on. And indeed, by this same metric, if we want to think in those terms, one can dismiss the claims of authenticity and authority of other bodies which have, may have many positive attributes to them, many good aspects to history, but do not share that lineage, that continuity of teaching and truth back to the apostolic foundations of the Church. And, as an offshoot of that idea of how one might negate the authority or authenticity of other groups, it is sometimes seen by groups who are apart from that apostolic lineage as the route back into authenticity, that they might be united to or come into communion with a body that grants that apostolic continuity. So if we think of this steady line of apostolic succession and a group that might have broken away at some point in history, that by being reunited to a body in apostolic authority, that is to say, the Holy Church, that this group is then itself given apostolic merit. Now, as I say, the basic principle of this is not wrong. And indeed, certain amongst the Holy Fathers of the Church, no less than my namesake, St. Irenaeus, are writing already in the middle of the second century about the succession of the Apostles in these terms, that when I walk into a church in London, or in Paris, or in Ukraine, or in America, or Australia, or no matter where it might be, I can have confidence that the teaching is true because it bears this lineage this unbroken succession of doctrine to the earliest days. As I say, a multitude of the Holy Fathers speak about this, as well as the fact that there is more than one line, more than one apostle. So you have the succession that comes from many apostles, which is identical. And in this way, if one path starts to go astray, the fact that the others do not can be a corrective. This also we have described as early as the second century. And so there is something essential about this. If we cease to teach what the apostles taught, then we cease to teach what Christ instructed them and us to proclaim. If we break away 
from the tradition of the apostolic foundations of the church, those which Christ himself laid with his apostles, then one must accept it in doing so. One departs from Christ's foundation. And so maintaining that apostolic succession, that verifiable transmission and continuity of dogma is very important. But, but, it is not the whole of what apostolic succession means. For the church to be apostolic at a more profound level, at a spiritual level, is for her to continue to be the church of that apostolic authority. Not to simply hark back to some bygone era, even if it be a very holy era, that being the era of the apostles themselves walking with Christ in Galilee and Jerusalem and elsewhere, but not simply harking back to a period of history and saying, by continuity with that moment in the past, we claim to have authority today, or by remembering and by maintaining what was done before, we have our identity in the present. But in a much more powerful way, to say the apostolic community continues in the church. We do not hark back simply to a moment in history, but we are the living manifestation in this moment of the reality that extends through all of history. The church is holy, catholic, and apostolic in the present moment. This is not a description of her past, but of her present. Even today, in the 21st century, nearly a quarter of the way into it, the Church is, in her living reality, apostolic. The communion of the Apostles continues, not only with the first twelve who were consecrated to that office by the Savior incarnate, but the whole community and the whole communion of all the successors of the Apostles, the hierarchs of the Church, throughout the centuries and the millennia, who continue to bear the same charge and the same grace and the same obedience to the Lord who is the head of the Church. For our Church to live in this apostolic continuity is to live amongst the living saints of the Church, to recognize that the Apostles continue to guide us, that St. Peter and Paul and Andrew and the rest continue to bless and pray for and guide the Church, and that all of those whose succession into that office comes from them and from their followers continue to receive the same grace today for apostolic ministry that they received all those centuries ago. Apostolic succession is for us a present reality of our identity. The Church of Christ continually has those raised up to serve her in the manner of those first called. Some of them are saintly and worthy, some of them are broken and fallen, and indeed all, to some degree, are broken and fallen. But the grace of Christ which sustained the first apostles sustains even those who bear that office in our day, despite their brokenness, despite their unworthiness. And that this is a reality that extends not just to bishops and hierarchs, but to the whole communion of Orthodox faithful. Because when we speak of apostolicity, it is not simply the twelve apostles in abstraction, but them amidst the faithful. They are the icons of Christ's grace reaching out to touch the hearts of every man, woman, and child who seeks to follow him. The apostolicity of the Church incorporates every Christian person. And this is the message of great joy for those of us living in these latter days, in this dark moment in human history, that the same grace that guided the Church in those first days, guides us now. The same Christ who led the first apostles leads us today. And the ministry of the apostles to save each of our souls continues even today. May we rejoice as Orthodox Christians in this gift of apostolic continuity and apostolic life. And may it be for us ever a source 
of reassurance and hope and joy in the grace of our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Patristic Nectar Publications is pleased to announce a new conference entitled The Sacred Arts, Preaching the Gospel Without Words, with lectures given by Father Maximus Konstas and Jonathan Pajot. From Friday, March 29th to Sunday, March 31st, conference topics will include The Origin of Sacred Art, How Iconography Preaches the Gospel, How to Read an Icon, How Architecture Preaches the Gospel, How Music Preaches the Gospel, and a sermon by Father Maximus. We hope you will join us for opportunities to pray, meet our speakers, attend a young adult social hour, and network with like-minded individuals. A $60 registration fee includes an in-person seat, access to a live stream which can be viewed from anywhere, and the conference recordings. To register and find more information, please visit conference.patristicnectar.org.